What are the biggest opportunities that you see for the near oh. future and scaling? I think yes, Chuck. So, no, I think there's so many opportunities. I mm-hmm. think there is a shift in like um, society in how I work in in Forge in the U.S. Even like oil and gas people are looking at like climate change and how like they need to put a value on carbon, value of conservation, value of like terroir, and like in and so I I'm really excited for the future. Um, I think there's a big opportunity to scale cocoa and conservation. Considering that the cocoa belt, which is 20 degrees north latitude, 20 degrees south latitude of the equator, and that's where all the biodiversity hotspots are. Can you tie it into carbon? Oh, totally. That's where the carbon storage is in the tropical yeah, areas. Indonesia, um, Africa, Brazil. Caribbean, Brazil. Yeah. So if you look at this like benefits transfer on this cocoa belt of like conservation, carbon storage, biodiversity hotspots, and like cocoa, it's like an overlap. Huge it's opportunity. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And the fact that like companies are starting to get on put oil and gas are putting value on carbon. Right. That so. I mean that alone, and they're not forced to. So I work in the compliance market in the U.S. in forest carbon offsets, and we won't talk a lot about that because it's a whole other episode, but. We should do that. That was forced. Yeah, that's actually really, but, but it's on, really interesting on, stuff. The oil and yeah, gas stuff, really but that was like forced because it was California compliance. They said you had to. Now, in the voluntary, This is saying, a teaser for that episode. They're so saying, yeah, they're, this is the, the oil and gas are saying, and this is, they've announced it, Shell, BP. They're saying, we want to invest because there's an exit oh, value thank you. of carbon. This is a BTU that's not going away. Like, like we need to acknowledge this. So, I think cocoa and conservation is huge, huge opportunity. I think that um, craft chocolate will continue to be a little bit like the same pace, not like this hockey sick curve, but that there's opportunity there. And so I'm excited. Real, real quick, any idea of how many craft chocolate makers are out there now? In the world? Oh, well, that's starting in the US. I have, I have a guess. It's like yeah, I, I'd imagine. So I, I, I would say, I would say the US. More. So do you know who actually knows how many craft chocolate makers are out Lorenzo. there? Bavani. From Diamond okay. Custom Machines because he, he sells would. the Premier Wonder Grinders, yeah. and so like that's what a Which lot of people of are using. Which is one of the next episodes we need to do. Oh man, you can totally talk to him. Oh, that'd be yeah. super cool. Um, I've heard three to four hundred hmm. in, in the, the US. U.S. Yeah. So worldwide, you're probably talking about a thousand. It's just huge. There's a lot. Yeah. It's not I mean, that like it's, it's not that that five, not that small. So, of those so just decent size. That's exactly just yeah. to kind of like our yeah. mission, and we probably should have started out with this. We but do you did. have a mission? As well, I mean, we totally do. Start oh, you do? Mission. What is your mission? mission is, <laughs> What's your mission? You as long as you know what you're going to do. Conserve <laughs> biodiversity hotspots. So when he, he asked me a oh, question. That's his mission. About, Which ties like, into biggest what, opportunities. What's the opportunity? Yeah. That's where I see this like growth in this political shift. Yeah. The cacao belts, the conservation area, and like getting more conservation out there. Yeah. Which is different than maybe a little bit of the, the chocolate. Like, so, so where do you see yourself in five years? As far as yeah. scale and size. I, I, Hawaii. Himself. I mean, I imagine he sees himself in Hawaii again. I feel like... Um, I sure hope so. In five years, honestly, we're going to have multiple Zorzel models, not called Zorzel, but throughout the Cocoa Belt. Um, I feel like finally we've had that shift where investment and financing is going to be geared towards that. It's not because the people want to do good. It's because they like actually has the ecosystem has value. They're going to mm-hmm. invest in that. And so I'm excited about that. So it's an additional income stream for starting agroforestry models. Yeah, like beyond additional. It's no longer this little piece. Yeah. And, and then it's like, selling it's like the finished big money's byproduct coming product of like BP's carbon uh, offsetting is cocoa. Yeah. I mean, right now a metric ton of carbon is valued in the compliance market like $12. BP has come out in shell. They think it's going to be 180 or $100 in 10 years. We're talking 10x value. So everyone's so like, going to be chasing, trying yeah. to invest in carbon, which is a good thing. Like, which that's is, what we want. And chocolate fits in there. And, yeah, like, all exactly. these good businesses are doing great things, so. Right, because craft chocolate doesn't deforest. It's really agroforestry models. There's not one craft chocolate bar I've ever seen that supports, like, a deforestation remotely. You probably and, know more than you know. 95% <laughs> of us I mean, you're going to pick one or two. But because, like, the guys like you, who are the leaders of the industry, go to Origin, you know who you're working with, and you guys are getting to scale, okay? You're not, like, this little, yeah. you know, you, like, it's replicable. Yeah. Yeah.